Hey, welcome back to Burnt Wood Workshop. Today, we're gonna to cover laser engraving painted plywood. And what we're gonna go over is taking some tests and taking just a regular painted plywood board like this and coming out with something like this. We're gonna go over 3D engraved images, we're gonna go over lettering and a few other practical applications and some multi-layer, so stay tuned. So in my last video, we did some laser engraving on regular plywood. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our engraving on painted plywood. So basically, to get this image, I took just a plain piece of plywood and I painted it green with some Sherwin-Williams interior paint. And then, by getting the correct power, speed, and lines per centimeter, you end up with something like this. And as we get to the end of the video, we'll go a little more in depth on what we did with multi-layer and things like that. So what I'll do first, I'll show you how to do the test grids. And what we did was we ran some test grids to try and dial in what we wanted for our power, speed, and lines per centimeter. So we'll go over that next. Okay, so this is the image we want to engrave. So what we want to do is we want to do a quick test. And you can do a whole test grid, which I can show you. I'll show you how to do a test grid, and then I'll show you how to do a quick test. So this program here, we're going to crop it, and we're going to wait for it to come up. There we go. Okay, so now we've got this. We're going to bring this down. What I'd like to have it be is a... We're going to lock that together and want to make it one by one. Well, it didn't make it one by one. So we're going to unlock it and we're going to make it one by one. Okay, so we're going to take this and then we're going to take our image and we're going to adjust it around until we get it to a spot where it's a good selection of lights and darks. Now right here we've got a good selection of lights and darks. So that's what we want for our test. So we cropped our image out and we've got this little section here and in it we are set for engraved to so 2300 140 at jarvis okay we're gonna switch that to grayscale that doesn't matter all right so we've got our settings and we want to make a test grid so what we want to do is we want to do material test array and what you've got to watch on these is you don't ever want 100 percent power on these because 100% power will burn it to a crisp. So we don't want to go really any higher than 35. Whoops, no, 35, 36, whatever, 35. And starting at 10 is a bit low, so I would start at 15, say. And our speeds, we're, we want to go to higher end. So we're going to go 150 and say 350. This is just an example of a test grid. Now there's your test grid. And if you don't set your lines per centimeter from that original square, it's going to leave it at whatever their set is that they put up. And it's usually about 70 and 70 doesn't work so good. So this would be your test grid. That's how you make a test grid. And if you wanted more lines, you could add more columns and this would add all these different powers in between. See, now you've got a huge array of choices. By doing this, this is great to get you dialed in, but if you paint your boards a little bit different each time, these settings are gonna be somewhat irrelevant. So once you get a ballpark area, you can take on that board in a little section, just do a couple of small tests to get an idea if it's gonna work or not. That's a lot easier than this. So that's what a test, test grid would look like. Okay, so there's our test. And we know that 20 and 300, and we're going to switch this to grayscale, actually. It, it works either way. It works really well. And we got 140 lines per centimeter. Now, when you do your test grid, you want to make sure you get these set up before you do your test grid in the engrave. Otherwise, it will set it to their preset, which is about 70, which you don't want. It won't engrave well at all. 70 through paint, you'll have a lot of blotchy areas. And I'll show a demonstration of what that looks like, too, because I've done it. So you want to take this and you just want to do a quick test. So you want to take this one and you want to make it 2300 
You're going to copy. You're going to paste it. And you're going to make the next one say 25,300. Then you can paste the next one and you say make that one 2250. Whoops, not 2025. We're not in the year 2525 or 2025. Oh, we are. We're gone. 2025 is gone now. We're in 2026. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so we've got our setup here. And then we're just going to, on our board, we're going to just pick a little lower corner. We're going to take these and we're going to bring them down into the lower corner. And we're going to engrave test it and see what it looks like. So here's our little test in the corner. And as you can see, the middle one is probably the best one, which is actually the numbers that we did the full size one on. So we already knew that was going to work, but I just want to give you a demonstration to see what it looks like on just a little small test like that. So after the dragon, I want to try something a little more elaborate and go a little more in depth. So what I did was on this one, I painted a board purple and then I painted it white. And when I engraved this one, I basically did a quick test grid of just a ballpark of where, I, when I got to the purple. So when I got to the purple, those were the settings I went by. And this is what we came up with. So when I got this one done, I said, well, I didn't like the purple, so I want to try it in blue. So I did one in blue. And I thought the blue one looked a little washed out. And of course on this one, I painted a little scrap board just exactly the same amount of paint and everything. And I ran a test grid of a little larger sizes to get a better idea of where I wanted to be dialed in here. So that came out really nice. But I still wasn't happy. So then I went and I painted this one blue. Then I painted it purple. Then I painted it white. So with the three layers, you get a lot more definition and colors. What we'll do is we'll take these. Kind of show it side by side with all of them. And you can see this one's got the purples, but it's also got the blues in it. So you get, I think, a little more depth out of that. And it was a little smaller, so it didn't come out looking quite as detailed. But I'll do another one with even more colors eventually. And we'll, I'll do a video on that when I do some more colors. So this is the castle and grave, and I just thought I'd show you what the settings were and what we did here. On this castle and grave, we ran at a 25 power and a 210 speed. I ran that one at Jarvis and 160 lines per centimeter. And if you do this engraving and you end up with like the one the sun didn't quite get as refined as I wanted, it was a little white around it more, you can actually lower your power and up your speed. And if you don't take it out of, out of the machine, you can rerun it. I ran the one three times. So you could rerun this a couple times till you get the exact output you want for it. On the uh, two color one I did with the blue and the purple, I didn't rerun that and the sun still had a bit of bleed around it. It could have been more defined, but it was just a small test. And I'm gonna do a bigger one of those. But if you don't get the results you want the first time, not quite as deep of as, an, as deep of a color and detail as you'd like, you can run it again. And I would just run it at a much lower power and a much higher speed so that it just takes a little bit off. And that also works with like you're doing with the infill with engraving. If you do the engraving and then you have that black char in your letters, you can actually run it at like 25, 300, and that'll clean the char right out before you put your paint in. It works really nice. I saw that on a YouTube video. Somebody posted it. it I've used it. It works great. But this is basically the same idea. You're cleaning up a little bit more at a high, you know, at a high speed and a low power. So that's just something to try. And we'll go back to the other stuff. So instead of having to paint a board, mask it off, infill it, clean it up, you could just paint this board, paint a board two colors and have text come out just like this. These come out really nice. I did these two white and blue. 
I did this white and orange. So you could mix your colors up just like the two-tone acrylic and make a bunch of these signs. And you could do these on three-quarter inch pine or whatever you wanted. I just did these on these because I had the pieces already painted for the other stuff I was doing. And I figured I might as well do this too. So you could do signs like this and save yourself the masking and all of that. The other thing you can do is <clears throat> I made this card box and I did the engraving in layered paint with this and this was the very first attempt I ever made at this and not all of them came out great I mean they're not great little this was my first attempt I got things dialed in a little better now so I will definitely be doing another one of these but even something like this I just did this little sun with a board that was painted orange and white so instead of having your engravings in, say, wood, where you just get the burn and the color, you could have multi multiple colors on your stuff you're making out of wood. So on these with the words, I basically do two to three co coats of the lower color, and then I do basically the white, I'll do as many coats it takes to completely cover the lower color. I don't go crazy on it. And then on this... I went a power of 42 and a speed of 500 with 160 lines per centimeter. So it cleaned it up real nice and it makes it really, it's a pretty quick engrave. So you could do production of, on a sheet. You can get quite a few of these out of it. And then if you set it up with your engraving and then you quickly make a ring around it and make that your cut, you could have these basically engraved and cut out pretty quick. So I did a couple different ones. And you could do, it's just like the, just like I said, it's like the two-tone acrylic. So you could pick any colors you want. And I haven't tried it, but you could even almost do like several different colors and do your different power settings for each letter to get different colors. That's something you could try. I haven't tried that yet, but now that I said it, I may have to try that too. <clears throat> so I've got my two coats of blue paint underneath. Now I'm just going to roll on some purple, which apparently got some chunks in there. And roll the purple out over the blue. Try to keep this as even as we can. We want a nice even coverage. See right there I got lights. So we're going to roll over this until it's pretty well. Whoops. There we go. Okay, that's just our first coat of purple, so got that even, and then I always keep them in a Ziploc bag so I can keep my rollers a lot longer, because I'm cheap. And there is our first coat of purple over the blue. So for all these demonstrations, I use just plain eighth inch plywood. And I painted it, my first coat, I do like two to three layers, two to three coats, thin coats. And what I do is I put them on with these, these Wiz rollers. These are a microfiber roller. They work fantastic. They're a really smooth finish. So you, you get a real nice, even, smooth finish. Basically, just one of these handles and some of these Wiz rollers work fantastic. You get a nice coat. And I'm using regular Sherwin-Williams interior paint. So I go through a lot of paint. So the regular Sherwin-Williams interior paint works good. You could use acrylic paint. Uh, a lot of people are spraying. You could spray paint them. I'm not spray painting them because I'm in the winters in Maine and it gets pretty cold and I don't want to paint inside with spray paint. So your tests will help you figure out what speed, power, and lines per centimeter you want to use. And that'll take some dialing in with maybe different, different paints. I'm not sure on that. I know on this one, I did it with a brush instead of the roller, and the brush marks gave me some issues. So you probably would be, you would definitely be better off doing it with the microfiber rollers. The brush marks did cause some issues with the engraving, and it burnt through in spots, and I didn't get as even of a coat as I would have with these. So if you like the video, give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. I've always got all kinds of different things going on. 
Leave a comment if you have any questions about these or if you just like the video. I'd love to hear what you got to say. Post some pictures of attempts you've made at different things or some if you do something awesome like this, post it in the comments. I'd love to see what you're doing. I really enjoy doing these. And I will continue to do more. I'll probably be doing some dice towers and a bunch of different stuff with these. And maybe some of these game card boxes. You can make your signs, make all kinds of signs. Dragons. I'm going to keep going at it. My next video is probably going to be a another door design, which is actually going to be a wall art piece too. And we're going to use the S, X tool S1, but I'm going to make something larger than you can make in the bed. And we're going to show how to make a larger item with that machine and how that works. And it'll also have some sublimation and a bunch of different stuff.